Welcome to Music History Monday for October 31st, 2022. I'm Bob Greenberg, and the title for today's podcast is The Grandmother of All Drop Parties. If you haven't already, please consider joining me on my subscription site at patreon.com slash Robert Greenberg Music, where I blog, vlog, podcast, pontificate, review, and bloviate four to six times a week. Before moving forward, the title of this post, The Grandmother of All Drop Parties, demands an explanation slash definition. A grandmother is the mother of a parent, though in this usage, thank you, it is meant to indicate the ultimate example of what follows, as in, the grandmother of all drop parties. I know you knew that. On to the important definition. A drop party, or release party, or launch party, is a festive event sponsored by someone or some corporate entity to celebrate the release of a new product or service. In these here parts, meaning the San Francisco Bay Area, the most familiar sort of drop parties are those usually lavish affairs thrown by tech companies to launch new hardware or software, as opposed to underwear, overwear, everywhere, nowhere, or whatever wear. Certainly, the pandemic put a major crimp on such parties, but I have little doubt that they will be back, and that's because they check off so many important boxes. They allow a company to celebrate itself and to entertain its employees and clients while also drawing in potential customers at the same time. They increase brand visibility and brand status and presumably serve as venues for networking. They can also cost a freaking fortune as companies continue to up the ante in order to one-up the competition. Yes, of course such parties will be held in desirable, exclusive, high-end venues. Of course they will offer copious amounts of the best quality food and drink, often prepared by celebrity chefs and bartenders. And of course there will be entertainment, typically provided by everyone from famous musicians to circus performers, and perhaps even a few celebrity guests circulating around as well, celebrity guests that will press the flesh, take selfies with, and provide autographs for the attendees. And let's not forget the freebies and the gift bags containing everything from branded clothing to expensive foodstuffs, to jewelry, electronics, and so forth. Writes tech industry observer Mary McMahon, quote, In the late 1990s, the launch party took off, with some cities, such as San Francisco, hosting upwards of 20 such parties a week in spaces ranging from exclusive venues to rented convention centers. As more companies started to have these events, the pressure to have a catchy gimmick or draw increased, with most companies consulting with party planning firms for their expensive soirees. Many firms also hope to use the launch party for new employee recruitment, projecting a forceful, trendy image of the company to prospective new employees." Unquote. Question. Are such launch parties, in fact, outdated rituals, resource-wasting exercises in corporate hubris? Many folks today would say yes. But there are a lot of event planners and caterers out there desperate to get back into business, so I wouldn't count them out just yet. The Musical Launch or Drop Party For our information, it wasn't the high-tech industry that created the lavish, over-the-top launch party. Long before the phrase high-tech ever entered our vocabulary, there was the musical drop party. A musical drop party or release party or launch party 
is a gathering held to celebrate the release of a new song or album, or even the creation of a new record label. We're not talking here about the smallish, ultra-civilized wine and cheese soirees that pass for the parties surrounding the release of a concert recording. No, no, we're talking about pop and rock and roll drop parties, which are, or at least were, a different animal entirely. Which brings us, finally, to the grandmother of all drop parties, what is generally considered the craziest drop party of all, one that took place 48 years ago today. Swan Song Records On October 31, 1974, 48 years ago today, the band Led Zeppelin threw a drop party to celebrate both their new in-house record label called Swan Song Records, as well as the label's first United Kingdom release, an album called Silk Torpedo by the band Pretty Things. It was the drop party by which all subsequent musical drop parties have been measured and found wanting. Led Zeppelin had initially launched their new label, named after an unfinished and unreleased instrumental number called Swan Song, in May of 1974. In an interview conducted in 1977, Jimmy Page, born 1944, guitarist and founder of the band, explained why the members and management of Led Zeppelin had created their own record label. Quote, We'd been thinking about it for a while, and we knew if we formed a label, there wouldn't be the kind of fuss and bother we'd been going through over album covers and things like that. Having gone through ourselves interference on the artistic side by record companies, we wanted to form a label where the artists would be able to fulfill themselves without all of that hassle." Unquote. In introducing slash launching Swan Song Records, Led Zeppelin initially hosted two drop parties in Los Angeles, the second of which was held at the five-star luxury Hotel Bel Air on May 10, 1974. This party featured a bevy of then A-list celebrity guests, including Groucho Marx, David Geffen, Lloyd Bridges, Dr. John, Michelle Phillips, and Mickey Dolenz of The Monkees. Wow. To think that there was a time when Mickey Dolenz was considered to be A-list material. However, these parties in the City of Angels were but a prelude, a warm-up act for the main event, the Swan Song Records Drop Party, to be held back home in Britain, which was scheduled for October 31, 1974. That party was scheduled for October 31st, Halloween, for good reason, as the strange and macabre were to be the operative themes for the evening. The locale. The party took place at the Chislehurst Caves in what was, until 1965, Kent, and which today is the London Borough of Bromley, about 10 miles southeast of Charing Cross, meaning central London. These so-called caves are, in fact, a huge series of intersecting person-made tunnels and caverns covering some 22 square miles, tunnels and caverns created by the mining of flint and chalk between the 13th and 19th centuries. In the early 20th century, stories circulated that the caves had, in fact, been created by Druids, by the Romans, and by early Saxon settlers. This was, in fact, bogus information, but it gave the caves a certain haunted, vaguely malevolent cachet, and they became something of a tourist attraction. But the caves served practical purposes as well, and were used to store ammunition during World War I, between 1914 and 1918, and as a bomb shelter during World War II, between 1939 and 1945. Nonetheless, the Chislehurst Caves, 
really came into their own during the 1960s as a venue for rock and roll. Among the top acts that played there were David Bowie, Status Quo, Jimi Hendrix, The Rolling Stones, and Pink. But more than anything else, it was the lavish, ghoulish drop party held there on October 31st, 1974 by Led Zeppelin that forever put the caves on the rock and roll map. The party. For those good people, lucky enough to have attended, it was quite an event. Drinks were served by women dressed as nuns and wearing suspenders. Naked women covered in jelly lay squirming in coffins. What were referred to as naked male wrestlers cavorted in recesses along the caves. Robert Plant's friend, the musician Jeff Grimes, recalled, quote, The swan song launch in England was on Halloween at Chislehurst Caves, which was like a labyrinth. Everywhere that was accessible, they seemed to find something to put on in it. There were a bunch of naked male wrestlers writhing around in dust. I just stood in the doorway and looked at this. Nuns walking towards you with the complete habits on, but then you looked and there was nothing on the back except suspenders. Unquote. According to BBC's Bob Harris, quote, It was like a medieval orgy. Flames from huge torches flickered light across the dark, dank recesses of the caves, while a crowd of maybe 200 people watched George Melly perform jazz tunes and body songs in a nun's habit, naked girls wrestling in jelly in open coffins at his feet. In all, it was a strange and disturbing night." Unquote. Gang! Where was technology when we needed it? Half-naked waitresses and cutaway nuns' habits, homo-eroticized naked male wrestlers cavorting in the corners, naked women lying in coffins writhing in jelly. Where were the video recording cell phones when we needed them? Alas, they were still 25 years in the future, and as a result, the only photographic record we have from the party are those black and white photos shot by photographers hired to commemorate the event for our information. The first commercial camera phone was the Kyocera Visual Phone VP210, which was released in Japan in May of 1999. It was branded at the time as being a mobile video phone. Plan your own drop party. As the links provided with this post indicate, there is no shortage of information on the web on DIY drop parties. As a public service, I've provided links to three such articles. Most of the information in the articles is absurdly obvious. Pick a date for your party, find a venue, make a guest list, and don't forget to actually invite those guests. Feed your guests, sample your new recording for the guests, create a gift bag for your guests, and so forth. You know, it seems to me that if you've ever organized a birthday party for a child, you are already more than prepared to put together a drop party, minus, perhaps, the bouncy house. So there it is. Start putting together your drop party now. My only request is that you put me on the invitation list, and that you do not stint when it comes to nude male wrestlers and writhing, jelly-covered, coffin-bound naked ladies. Thank you. To sample and download one or all of my many courses on subjects musical produced by The Great Courses slash The Teaching Company, please visit my website at robertgreenbergmusic.com.